We're looking at uh, elements of grace found in the book of Nehemiah. We uh, are in a section where we're talking about the power of God's grace and living in such a way that we experience the power uh, of God's grace. And we found that uh, the people, after the wall is completed, they assemble, they hear the word of God, they listen, they see, they get a new vision, uh, they stand, they respond, and yet they, they weep. And we found out that they, they are stuck, if you will. They're stuck in, in a grief. And how are they going to get past that? How is their religion going to be more than that which just causes them grief? I found this quote. I thought this was interesting. Robert Louis Stevenson once entered in his diary uh, that he, what he considered to be something extraordinary. Here's what he said. I have been to church today, and surprisingly, I am not depressed. You see, sometimes we think our, our spiritual service to God needs to be void of joy. The passage that we uh, just listened to from Psalm talked about the joy that ought to fill our hearts. Uh, Robert Owens has said this, Don't let the passing victory of the evil steal your joy, because if the devil can't steal your joy, he can't keep your stuff. You see, if the devil can't take my joy, he can't keep my stuff. He cannot take my spirit. He cannot quench my, 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 the element of happiness that is mine. Living beyond spiritual sorrow. We found last time in our study that they did that by making the day holy, by practicing the joy of the Lord or coming to the joy of the Lord, by calming their troubled hearts and by doing what they knew. Now, I think that most of us today probably stand in need of a joy infusion. Uh, anybody disagree? Everybody, everybody kind of need this today? Good, good, because we're going to try to, we're going to try to make that happen a little bit. This world is extremely, it's a broken place, and all that it can extend to us are broken standards that don't work, that get shifted from, from time to time. It can, it can share with us lame solutions, and all that it offers us is an incomplete soothing. So we don't get anything from this world that really offers us sustaining joy. Not that there aren't joyful things that we experience in this world, but this world cannot give us a sustaining element of joy and happiness. However, as God's children, we know that our wholeness and our completeness is far beyond this broken world, yet we often are so tied to this brokenness that what we experience uh, in this life is confusion because we don't know how to deal with the brokenness and have joy at the same time. And it gets confusing, and it is difficult, and all of us struggle with that. It's kind of like this true story. There was a mother who, of eight who entered a living room, and she found five of her youngsters huddled around in a circle. Now, a mother of eight, five kids in a circle in the living room, she was concerned. So she decided to approach the huddle, and she did that rather on the stealth, and so she's silently sneaking up behind her kids. She gets to the point where she's able to look down and see that in the middle of the, of the five kids are five baby skunks. And they have brought those into the house. Okay, so she sees the skunks, and she screams at the top of her lungs, Kids, run! And all five of them picked up a baby skunk, and they did. <laughs> you know, they obeyed. And you know, I read that and I thought, that, that's really what happens to us with the standard of the world and the confusion of the world. We stand around looking at things, trying to sort it all out and figure out what stinks and what doesn't stink. And, and, and the Lord says, hey, I offer you joy, come on. And, 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 and it's like, well, we've got to grab something and, and head that direction. So we struggle. We struggle trying to find and let the joy of the Lord become our strength. And that's what we looked at in Nehemiah chapter 8 and verse 12. Do not be grieved, for the joy of the Lord is your strength. Our strength is in the Lord, but it's in the joy of the Lord. And we can have the Lord and still be miserable, but we can't have strength. So let's talk about some things about the joy of the Lord. The joy of the Lord broadens the dimensions of our circumstances. I'm going to use a familiar passage in the book of Philippians to uh, 
to illustrate the points that we're going to talk about today. Number, uh, the first, we begin in Philippians chapter 1. Now, I want you to know, brethren, that my circumstance stances have turned out for the greater progress of the gospel, so that my imprisonment is the cause of Christ, in the cause of Christ, has become well known throughout the whole Praetorian Guard and to everyone else. And that most of the brethren, trusting in the Lord because of my imprisonment, have far more courage to speak the word of God without fear. Do you hear any despair in those words? I mean, we've got Paul, he's stuck in prison, but I don't hear any despair. He is saying, this thing is just working out marvelously. Here I am in prison, but the word of the Lord is just being, it's just being progressed and things are just really happening well. Paul considers that what's going on in his life in prison is progress. Progress. Interesting word in the original language because it's a word that was used of a group of woodcutters that would precede the army. And their task was to chop down lumber, forests, so that the soldiers could make their way through. That was progress. It was considered progress. Their task was simply to clear the way through the forest so that the troops could go to battle. Sing for joy to God our strength. Shout joyfully to the God of Jacob. Okay, now, my Bible says, if any of you is happy, let him. If anyone is happy, let him. If anyone's happy, let him what? Oh, that's a little better. I think your Bible says the same thing in James 5. If anyone is happy, let him sing. We're talking about experiencing the joy of the Lord as our strength. Guess what we're going to do? Hey. We're going to sing. We're going to sing some first verses of most of these. So you're going to have to pay close attention. Uh, there, I think it's only one or two exceptions in the whole round. So we're just going to go from one to the other. But our first set of songs are going to do with looking beyond the circumstances. That the joy of the Lord enables me to look at my situation differently. And these are some songs that will help us, that will remind us of that. Here we are but straying pilgrims, here our path is often dim, but to cheer us on our journey still we sing this wayside hymn. Yonder over the rolling river where the shining mansions rise, soon will be our home forever, and the smile of the blessed giver gladdens all our longing eyes. I just want to be where you are, dwelling daily in your presence. I don't want to worship from afar, draw me near to where you are. I want to be where you are. Dwelling in your presence, feasting at your table, surrounded by your glory, in your presence, that's where I always want to be, I just want to be. I just want to be with you. No tears in heaven, no sorrows given, all will be glory in that land. There'll be no sadness, all will be gladness when we shall join that happy band. No tears, no tears, no tears up there, Sorrow and pain will all have flown. No tears, no tears, no tears up there. No tears in heaven will be known. I would love to tell you what I think of Jesus, since I found in him a friend so strong and true. I would tell you how he changed my life completely. He did something that no other friend could do. No one ever cared for me like Jesus. 
There's no other friend so kind as he. Sin and darkness from me. Oh, how much he cared for me. Okay, we get a different view of our circumstances in the joy of the Lord. We also recognize that the joy of the Lord delivers us from a preoccupation with others. We talked with that some in our class this morning about how it's so easy for us to focus on other people's lives and see what we believe to be failure in their lives. Philippians chapter 1, Paul continues, It's true that some are preaching out of jealousy and rivalry, but others preach about Christ with pure motives. They preach because they love me, for they know that I have been appointed to defend the good news. Paul says, There are people who are friends of mine. I'm in prison. They keep preaching Jesus. They identify with me. They're not afraid to identify with me. But then he continues, Those others do not have pure motives as they preach about Christ. They preach with selfish ambition, not sincerely, intending to make my chains more painful to me. Now watch this, but that doesn't matter. Whether their motives are false or genuine, the message about Christ is being preached either way, so I rejoice. And I will continue to rejoice, for I know that as you pray for me and the Spirit of Jesus Christ helps me, this will lead to my deliverance. How did Paul react to those who were taking pot shots at him? This doesn't matter. Doesn't matter. Even aware of their corrupt motives toward him, Paul chose a freeing, joyful response. Doesn't matter. What difference does it make? Even those that were against him as a person possessed abilities that were encouraging some to be saved. And so Paul said, hey, I rejoice in the good that gets done. Wow. You see, one of the things about the joy of the Lord is it keeps us from being overly concerned about everybody else. We focus mo more on ourselves and we live within that joy. Larry Wright says, given half a chance, people often crawl out of the boxes into which we've relegated them. So you see, Focus on me, live in the joy, let people crawl out of their own boxes. Psalm chapter 27 and verse 6, And now my head will be lifted up above my enemies around me, and I will offer in his tent sacrifices with shouts of joy. I will sing, yes, I will sing praises to the Lord. For the next section of songs, these are the kind of songs that you really can't set for. So if you would like to stand and are able to, feel free to do that as we go through these together. We have come this place to glorify his name and worship him we have come into this place to glorify his name and worship him we have come into this place to glorify his name and worship Christ the Lord Worship Him, worship Christ the Lord. If you have a heavy heart and a troubled mind, just worship Him. If you have a and a troubled mind, just worship Him. If you have a weary heart. And a troubled mind, just worship Christ the Lord. Worship Him, worship Christ the Lord. Just forget about yourself, glorify His name and worship Him. Just forget about yourself, Glorify His name and worship Him. Just forget about yourself. Glorify His name and worship Christ the Lord. Worship Him, worship Christ the Lord. We have come into this place 
to glorify his name and worship him. If you have a heavy heart and a troubled mind, just worship him. Just forget about yourself, glorify his name and worship Christ the Lord. Worship Him, worship Christ the Lord. <clears throat> Altos. Love one another. God is love, 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 God is love. God is love, God is love. Thy God with all thy heart, all thy soul, all thy strength, all thy mind. Love the Lord, thy God with all We shall assemble on the mountain, we shall assemble at the throne, with humble hearts into his presence, we bring an offering of song, glory and honor and dominion, unto the Lamb and to the King, hallelujah. Hallelujah, we sing the song of the redeemed. I traveled down a lonely road and no one seemed to care. The burden on my weary back about me to despair. I oft complained to Jesus how folks were treating me and then I heard him say so tenderly my feet were also weary upon the Calvary road the cross became so heavy I fell beneath the load be faithful weary pilgrim the morning I can see just lift your cross and follow close to me. Amen. You can be seated if you want. The joy of the Lord gives me a different perspective of my situations and circumstances. The joy of the Lord leads me to where I do not have over-concern about others. And the joy of the Lord calms fears about my future. Again, we look at what Paul says. I eagerly expect and hope that I will in no way be ashamed, 
but will have sufficient courage so that now, as always, Christ will be exalted in my body, whether by life or by death. For to me, to live is Christ and to die is gain. If I am to go on living in the body, this will mean fruitful labor for you. Yet what shall I choose? I don't, I do not know. I'm torn between the two. I desire to depart and to be with Christ, which is better by far. But it is more necessary for you that I remain on in the body. Convinced of this, I know that I will remain and I will continue with all of you for your progress and joy in the faith so that through my being, through my being with you, you again count your joy and you again, with you again, your joy in Christ will overflow on account of me. Paul has an expectation and a hope. And those were the counterbalances that he held that conquered any fear that he might have had. He's in prison, doesn't really know his outcome, but he has an expectation and a hope. My expectation is I'm going to be freed. And if I'm freed, it's going to bring joy to you and we'll continue to work. But if, if that's not what happens, I have a hope. I have a hope and it'll be gain for me to realize that hope. Even the fear of death was neutralized by the gain that it offered the fear of what lied ahead for a prisoner overshadowed by the joy of faith and fellow Christians. Sometimes the Lord calms the storm, and sometimes the storm, he allows the storm to rage, and he calms the child. Sometimes he calms the storm. Sometimes he lets the storm rage, and he calms the child. Psalm 59, but as for me, I shall sing of your strength. Yes, I shall joyfully sing of your loving kindness in the morning, for you have been my stronghold and a refuge in the day of my distress. Be still and know that I am God. Be still and know that I am God. I just live from day to day. I don't borrow from its sunshine, for its skies may turn to gray. I don't worry o'er the future, for I know what Jesus said. And today I'll walk beside him, for he knows what is ahead. Many things about tomorrow I don't seem to understand, but I know who holds tomorrow, and I know who holds my hand. Amen. When peace like a river attendeth my way when sorrows like sea billows roll whatever my lot thou hast taught me to say it is well it is well with my soul it is well with my soul. It is well, it is well with my soul. Amen again. In his time, in his time, he makes all things beautiful. In his time, Lord, please show me every day as your 
teaching me your way, that you do just what you say in your time. <clears throat> My strength found in the joy of the Lord means I have an eternal perspective that views every situation I face differently. It gives me the ability to process it from a different perspective. It means I can avoid preoccupation about everyone else. It means I can concentrate on me, my joy, my relationship with the Lord. And number three, I can see the future through the calm hands of faith. I want to end with this psalm. For you have been my help, and in the shadow of your wings I sing for joy. My soul clings to you. Your right hand upholds me. Over the past few weeks, Becky has led her Wednesday night class in following the hatching of the baby falcons on top of the Capitol building. There are now four falcon chicks that are alive. One of the amazing things over the last week as that last one hatched is how that mother protects those young ones by keeping them under her wings. How diligent she is at keeping them tucked in. And if you go on the web, you can actually watch with the uh, streamed cameras and watch that all happen. But that's what I thought about with this psalm. Our Lord knows the joy that we need and he will keep us tucked under the shadow of his wings. And if I start to get out of place, he'll bring me back. And if I begin to experience the cold and the darkness and the hunger that is beyond, he will bring me back. The joy of the Lord is our strength, and we need to cling to that joy as our strength. So the question